Welcome to Quick Shots, a short format traditional archery podcast, where we introduce you to some of the world's most influential traditional archers, and occasionally, some random dudes. Help keep this content ad-free by supporting us on patreon.com slash archerygeek. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, archerypass.com, for all your traditional archery needs. That's awesome. I think that's awesome. We'll talk about that in a second. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Quick Shots. I'm your host, Mick Chambers. I'm here with Phoebe Bender, probably the best handle in all of Bearbow. Um, <laughs> I just love your name. I love your name. I just do. Um, and, <laughs> Phoebe's uh, Phoebe's uh, active on Instagram, and she's a bear bower, bear bowist, bear bow. Yeah, bear bowist, female bear, bear bow shooter, <laughs> beginner <laughs> at that. But yeah, yeah, thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for being here. I'm excited to talk to you. Um, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to play to the younger crowd, so we'll get you. <laughs> <laughs> you can talk. You can talk to those people. Um, it's it is really cool. It's cool that you're just starting off in bare bow. Like I, I need to get that whole story. I need to understand everything about this because I don't know that that's well. First of all, I'm gonna I'm gonna steal something. Steal some of your thunder. You're from Lancaster. Sorry, Lancaster. There you go. Yeah, that's what I mean. I know you're cringing. Yeah. You're cringing. Uh, so, uh, so that's like the mecca of uh, of uh, just archery in general. Yeah, that's it's a- really convenient. Like Lancaster archery is ten minutes from home, and I shot the Lancaster Classic. That was my first ever tournament. Uh, Don't get there. Do- wait, wait. Time out. So time great, out. But- <laughs> time out. Time out. We're getting too far ahead already. I oh, want to talk right, about all that out. stuff with you. <laughs> But I want to know about you. I want to find out about you. We want to talk about you, how you got into archery. Um, you know, is it something that you lifelong dream of doing? I don't know. Just tell yeah. us, tell us, tell us your origin story. In, uh, it's in kind of weird. Um, I started in archery about a year ago and it was kind of like a coping mechanism for me. Um, I lost my best friend of 13 years uh, to suicide and then two months later, my mom passed from breast cancer. So during that time, like last summer, I was um, kind of taking care of my mom, hospice care and coming home. And my husband and some of our friends were messing around with trad bows and just kind of naturally fell into it. And after she passed, um, it just kind of became my coping mechanism. Like some people do yoga. I just felt like being outside, staying focused on just shooting. It was just so helpful for me and surrounding myself with friends and shooting. It was awesome. So all through fall, you know, winter, we joined an indoor um, local archery range and it, it really saved me from um, just kind of missing those two really empowering women in my life. So, yeah. I'm really sorry to hear about your mom and your friend. Yeah, Um, She's with me all the time. She's, she's my angel. So she's here with me, but thank you. Oh, that's so nice. Um, (laughs) And it's, it's, it's good that you found, you know, you know, a bit of solace in, in uh, shooting archery, but, but, you know, that's the reason why you got into archery. That That's something that you, you were doing, but you're, you're, you're sticking it out. And, you know, I'm watching you on Instagram, you're training, you're working hard, you're putting your reps in. Um, what keeps you going? I think I'm addicted now. I mean, we started with trad bows and I like to say trad is like, a gateway drug to bear bow. And <laughs> I, I have only shot compound once or twice, but um, yeah, I love bear bow and shooting and just being outside in nature. I love um, like gardening and hiking and things like that. So it's just, it's everything. It's everything you could want for it in a sport. So, yeah, it is. It's, it's so, I mean, I, I think you're picking one of the, you know, traditional archery is tough. Instinctive archery is tough. Um, but bare bow, even though you have this really cool bow and you have ILF limbs and you got, you know, you're aiming, it's hard. Hey, it's not, it's not an easy game. It's not an easy game. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I, it's, it's challenging for sure, but you're only better than yourself the previous day and, you know, just one error at a time. So it's really fun. I, I love sharing it with friends too, that have never tried it or, yeah. Um, you know, female friends that maybe don't think that they could do it and then they try it and it's, um, really empowering for them. They love it and they're, they're hooked. So, um, that's really cool too. Tell me a little bit about that. You said that, I think you said that twice now, empowering. Um, and, and what does that mean to you? How does it empower you? 
Uh, I'm a teacher professionally. I teach art. So I think just encouraging students confidence. Um, I teach art. So through their creativity, but um, shooting and on the line, just feeling like that sense of trust in yourself and trusting your shot and seeing other people uh, pick up a bow for the first time. And, you know, if you've ever seen someone shoot for the first time, they're like, damn, this is awesome. Um, And that like spark and light that they get in their eyes, just, it's everything. It's so much fun. So um, maybe someday I'll start a NASP program at my school, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, Probably should shoot some more compound before (laughs) I try and coach it, but well, I think it's, NASP, you, you, they, they use the Genesis bow anyway, and it's fingers and it's it's bare bow. It's, it's just not bare bow recurve. It's bare bow, just bare bow. Um, yeah. yeah, but that's that is really cool. That would be cool if you did that. And I don't know that there's a lot of women that have started up something like that. And I think that would that would be really cool, especially where you're in this dominated area. Now, wait a second. I, I, I want to take that back. I'm, I was going to walk back something there. Because there's a lot of most people that are shooters here are like hunters and I would yeah. say predominantly compound in um, yeah. Lancaster area, which there's nothing wrong with hunting. I mean, I got my hunter safety license as soon as I turned 12, but <laughs> I, I don't <laughs> really American. go out much. So yeah. Do you, have you hunted before? Um, when I was like 12, it's not, <laughs> it's not really oh. my thing. Um, yeah. But that's okay. That's you know. okay. You don't need to, but I was going to, what I was going to say is I was going to take that back. There's not a lot of, um, probably a lot of men out there hunting and there in PA, but, but then I'm thinking Casey Kofeld, um, you know, fantastic. I mean, she's, she's right yeah. there too. Do you ever see her? Do you ever walk by her? She's brush awesome. elbows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Her and, um, you know, some other people that are pretty awesome shooters that are women at Lancaster archery. Um, it's really great. I actually just picked up her Jaeger grip and I'm loving it. So, um, yeah, super inspiring. And I think, you know, all women and anyone should try shooting archery if they haven't already. So, yeah, it it is a good, it is, it is a a pretty level playing field though, between all race, all sexes, all races. Um, Oh, for sure. Everyone shoots from the same line. Yeah. Everyone shoots from the same line. (laughs) So that's kind of cool. That's, that's a cool story. And you've only been at it for a year, you say. Yeah. And uh, I just recently started shooting 50 a meter back in April. So um, I'm headed to the Buckeye Classic in Ohio and then um, Outdoor Nationals in Malvern, PA. So those will be my second and third tournaments ever. <laughs> and, uh, you know, a few months of shooting 50. So my goal is just to kind of show up and have a good time. But yeah, it's it's so fun. It's awesome connecting with people in the community. Um, it's just such a great Barebo especially. I mean, we're the coolest of everyone, I think, personally. But <laughs> how do you get who gives you this confidence? Where are you getting this confidence from? Like, where do you get the like I don't want to do that? I don't want to do any of that stuff you just mentioned because it's scary. <laughs> it's scary as heck. Yeah, I think you know, there's failure involved in learning and um just showing up and trying, but having realistic expectations for yourself too. I know I'm not gonna show up and you know be number one on the first time of shooting uh, outdoor, but you know, it'll be fun and um, you can only go upward, you know? So that's true. Yeah. You start somewhere, you're right. And so, you know, that's pretty cool. That is good. And I didn't, I didn't realize you were such a competitor. Uh, I knew you were at Lancaster. (laughs) Um, I think we had talked before that previous to that, um, which was cool um, because that's, that's an intimidating shoot. Uh, Then outdoor nationals though. Where is that? being held this year malvern pa so um i just found out like today i'm gonna shoot uh mixed teams as well which is super cool just networking with people um someone needed a teammate and i'm like hey i'm by no means the best but let's have a great time and shoot so i'm looking forward to it a lot wow i love that so again great attitude you know great shooting and you're just having fun and are you get are you being coached at all or do you have any coach or uh I'm not I don't have a coach. Um I take, you know, input from anyone and everyone that um has insight. Uh I recently read Planning to Peak in Archery by Larry Weiss, and that was an awesome read. I don't know if you've read it yourself or if listeners have read it, but I highly recommend that. It's by no means a substitute for a coach, but it's somewhere to start and it's a really great great book in terms of shooting process and technique. 
Yeah. And so are you, are you referring back to that quite often uh, for your process and your shot process? Yeah, and your yeah absolutely. I think just um, the mental state yeah. that you're in in terms of affirmations, maybe that's what you said, confidence, um, just using affirmations and um, setting yourself up mentally to succeed in your shoots is everything like, yeah. Help me out. Help me out. What, what's an affirmation I can, I can lean on if I need one. Ooh, you want some affirmations? Okay. I'm putting you on the spot a little so, bit, you know, just tell me what, if you, whatever comes <laughs> to your head. Whatever. Um, just saying like, I can shoot, um, consistently and accurately in my practice today, or I can make progress in my practice today. Something like that. You repeat to yourself, uh, trust yourself, trust your shot. Um, <laughs> There's, there's a bunch, you can write them on little note cards, put them on your quiver. Um, yeah. But I think a lot of the um, professional bare bow shooters and any archer in general really relies on that, that mental game, um, uh, just positive self-talk. And if, even if you send a bad shot, just, hey, it happens. I, I didn't execute that shot the way I wanted to and moving forward, I think that's really helpful, so. Yeah. I, I... It's amazing how mature you are in terms of your shot process and the way you think about things. Like, honestly, you know, I've been doing this for a lot of years and I, I still, I have a hump. I can't get over that hump. Um, you know, and those affirmations are, you know, I, I keep forgetting about that. And, you know, I was a um, competitive rifle shooter for a long, long time. And, and we used to sit and we used to listen to, like, as a team, we'd listen to, um, you know, Olympic, previous Olympic, you know, champions. And they would talk a lot about affirmations. And I thought at the time, you know, when I probably when I was around your age, I thought, no, maybe I was a little bit younger. Um, but I, I, I think to myself, this is hocus pocus. This isn't going to help me. This isn't going to work. But those people that did, those people that actually took that to heart in the message that you're saying right now, um, just kicked my butt all the time, all the time, all the time. <laughs> and they just said they believed in it and they, they believed in themselves. It helped them to believe in themselves. And like you said, I think confidence is a lot to do with uh, uh, shooting good shots and and having a good time too. I mean, whether you shoot a good shot or not, um, I guess when when archery starts being come becomes boring or a chore or work, I guess that's when you know it's time for me to leave. It ha it does sometimes. You know, sometimes I'm up there. You know, I'm not gonna lie to you. And sometimes it's it is real work to get better. Um, but it should be fun while it's working and, and sometimes it's not. Yeah. And, uh, but you just got to get through that hump. And how about target panic? Are you, do you experience that at all? I think the classic was like a low for me. I shot like a personal worst there. Uh, part of it was I had had parent teacher conferences till like 10 o'clock at night and it was the first day of a new semester. So I'm like, in between ends on the line, emailing students from my phone. Cause I was so nervous about like leaving them with a sub, but target panic was huge for me then. Um, and I think that mental shift really happened in between um, like following the classic. And now uh, I think if you had interviewed me prior to that, completely different thought process and in terms of um, affirmations and just, yeah. um, you know, that mental game wasn't really there at that point in time. So, yeah. Yeah. For those people who, who have never done the classic and I haven't either, but um, here, here's what I've been, what, here's what I hear. Um, so one time I told a guy, I told someone, I'm not going to mention names, but um, I said, they said, you going to the classic. I said, yeah. He goes, how, how are you doing on your shooting? I said, well, I'm probably around a 245. Like I'm shooting 245 consistently. And he looked at me and went, he said, expect to shoot like 190. Yeah, he's like, absolutely. That's like, totally what happened. <laughs> it I'm was not. like, I was like shooting like 460s, 475. And I was like, oh, maybe I could make fall. Like, that'd be pretty cool, you know, oh, Yeah. even just to get to first round. And I think I shot like a 351 or something, which was, I hadn't shot something that low in, in months, but it was, it's a different environment. And I'm really looking forward to, um, you know, Buckeye Classic and Target Nationals. I have no idea what to expect yeah. at all. Uh, so we'll see. It'll be fun and it'll be a learning experience. So, yeah. Yeah, but well, you take what you can from that experience and then you you just move on. You take the positives of it and we don't, we don't think back on it. We don't look back on it. We don't take a look at the scores again. We just go keep going. We just keep going. Every day is better. 
some days might be a dip some days will be better but i i love that i love the fact that you're like yeah affirmations i gotta start thinking about in that way again yeah and Such are you reason. primarily like compound i think even recurve compound shooters everyone should try barebell like it's yeah. it takes that pressure off. I mean, there's not like a, Oh, I need to be drilling X's and shooting tens. And it, it's, it's like kind of a fresh of breath air, even if you've been shooting for a long time. Um, so yeah, it's, it's great. I love it. So yeah. yeah. And, uh, no, I'm, I'm, pr uh, primarily a bare bow shooter. Nice. Um, except you know I, what's up. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Like, I know that bare bow, bare bow is, is a different animal people it's funny you know i talk to some people who are trad archer or traditional instinctive archers and i ask them you ever have target panic and they typically say no a lot of them say no and the reason why they don't you know they're not focused on the tip of their arrow very much they're not focused on putting a certain space they're, they're focused on how the how it feels right um and then you get some some coaches that are actually very similar to that even though they're saying you know you're going to still aim but you're going to be your your body's going to naturally go to that spot where you got to go on you know it's it's so hard the game's so hard there's so many pieces of advice out there what would you tell someone uh like um some young person tr trying to get into this what would you tell them what would what would be a piece of advice or several pieces of advice is actually yeah. on on how I to think start just don't be afraid to start. I think uh, it can be a little overwhelming, all of the technical aspects of it, but just get yourself, you know, into a range, into a community of people that you can shoot with, a coach, um, and just try it. It's it's really awesome. And also just trusting yourself and your shot. That's apparently something I tell my friends a lot uh, when they're shooting the first time. I'm just like, trust yourself. Like, just trust yourself. You, you know what you're doing. So in that way, I think I am kind of more instinctive. It's, started with trad. Uh, I definitely don't hold as long as I should. I'm not like, you know, command shooting by any means. Um, but yeah, just absolutely try it. It's, it's a blast. And yeah. Yeah. And just go through, you know, I think one of the things that you touched on, I think what's really cool about you is that you have good equipment. You have pretty decent equipment, right? Thank tell you. Us, tell, <laughs> tell us what your equipment, tell us what you're yeah. shooting. Uh, I'm currently shooting a 25 inch Arcos Hoyt riser with, um, 30 pound, um, Integra limbs. Okay. And I have a biter plungers, the girl easy T rest. I just got the Jaeger grip. Um, so at the classic, I was shooting a PSE theory, like 20 pound limbs and just Easton vectors. So like pre-fletched everything. So kind of got into, um, building my own arrows and, that was a little bit intimidating at first. Like I was like, yeah. whoa, I don't, what is all, but it's super easy. I mean, YouTube, amazing. You can find anything out and people have been so helpful in the community. Uh, if I have a question about like, Hey, what like grain points should I use for this? What do you think? Everyone is super helpful. And, um, yeah, so I do enjoy my equipment, but <laughs> yeah, you got nice stuff. And I think you, I don't know who set you up with that or who told you to get that gear. Uh, maybe it was Lancaster. They did a good job if they did, because it's pretty nice stuff. Did you say, sorry, what arrows are you shooting again? Oh yeah. So currently I'm shooting, um, Easton, um, Avances, the okay. 730 spine, and I have 80 green points. I use top hats. Um, and I've played around a little bit with spin wings for 50, but I really like um, Bjorn Dragonflight veins. Yeah, they, uh, they they're real pretty and um, they hold up really well for 50. So, yeah. If I got any sitting around here. But yeah, I like them too. And I noticed you're shooting them as well. Uh, Dwayne Martin shoots them. I shoot them, you know, all the big names. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just name dropping. Just <laughs> no, but everyone's um, super, super helpful. Like if, if you don't know something, yeah. you can look up arrow charts, but just reach out to anyone and everyone's super helpful which is great so. so can i ask you a technical question on your 50 yard game so sure. you're shooting um 30 pound total or i bumped my limbs up i i stepped it up to 32 i'm probably holding like 31 okay. um and that was a a big challenge i mean i went from 35 pound trad to 20 pound uh recurve bare bow okay. and then jumped up to 30 pound limbs so it was a lot of strength building, um, just getting there. 
Um, I'm not aiming point on by any means. I'm probably aiming like at the top of the target for 50 meters, um, yeah. which it's been a challenge, but we'll, we'll get there. So, yeah. Yeah. Has anyone said to you, Hey, you know, this is how you can get point on and they give you any sort of advice. And, um, I think I was actually just listening to, I think you had, uh, JD on and he was saying he shoots like what? Seven fifty spine or something. Yeah. And it's like, I'm, like, it's like I don't know I'm shooting 730. So I'm like, man, so I might play around. I did play around with some VAPs. Um, I shot some 800 spine and a thousand spine, but, um, they were like a lot of stock. So <laughs> I was yeah. like, all right, this is what we're going to do. Um, but yeah, I, I think it'll get there in time just with building strength and, you know, stepping that up. So hopefully next year I'll be able to like, yeah, 8B.1. <laughs> uh, it's it's yeah. kind of funny to me. I mean, you said 32 is a, a stretch for you. And I would think, you know, I, you know, a lot of your stuff, a lot of your content uh, on Instagram, because uh, I've been stalking you there. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm uh, but any of the video, any things you showed, you're you're like outdoorsy. You're like you're like out in the do- outdoors doing yeah. stuff. You're fit. Um, okay. Yeah. So I I'm, I was kind of shocked. Thirty two. I thought maybe thirty five and thirty thirty six. I actually I think I started with thirty six, and I was just noticing with the amount I was shooting, like yeah. the number of arrows I was sending a day, it wasn't sustainable. So I, I haven't tried that since April. Um, I was able to shoot it and hold, but sending, you know, a hundred arrows a day, it was, I was like fatiguing and I was like, I just need to be, and people were kind of advising me like, Hey, don't overdo it. Like start slow, work your way up. So. Yeah. Don't, don't do it. Um, you know, you're kind of hurting yourself with the dragon flight veins because they're heavy. Right. Um, Yeah. And so that, you know, you're going to have to aim a little bit higher, but that is amazing. That's still, that's amazing. You're like, I'm shooting hundred arrows a day. I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. Not every day. That would be crazy, but most yeah. days. Yeah. So um, <laughs> it's really crazy to me though. My one friend who never shot, I have her shooting my 20 pound PSE and she's shooting 50 with me. She's shooting a really? uh, thousand spine um, vectors out of a 20 pound boat and she's hitting target. And, I'm, and she has like never really shot before. And I'm like, if she can do this, anyone can do this. Um, yeah. it's really, really cool. So, yeah. Yeah. 50 yard games, a fun one. Uh, I, it sounds like you listen to that JD, uh, three, uh, video. He yeah. talks a lot about us outdoor nationals. Anyone that has not listened to that and is going to us outdoor nationals, you're just hurting yourself because he's got a lot of good information in there. I like, he Dude, laid down a bunch of stuff. So helpful. I was like writing stuff. I'm like, all right, paper towels and my quiver in case it yeah. rain. Yeah. 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 He's, he's, Little plastic he bags. He's I like, jam. he was so smart. I mean, he has, he's got this down. He's, that's why he's a world record holder, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of nice to, to have a guy like on this. It's nice to meet you too. I mean, honestly, uh, you're surprising me with everything you say. I don't know what else to, to, to say about that i mean it's pretty <laughs> awesome um it's pretty awesome it's pretty um do you do you uh do you want to do any other games like you, i know you're doing indoor and outdoor is it just dots you um, want to shoot at or do you like i've shot some 3d and it was so fun because i love hiking i love being out in the woods so yeah. 3d was just like that perfect pairing of it but um just like uh he was saying like there's not a lot around this area Um, you know, ASAs and stuff, you really have to travel. Um, Being a teacher, summer is really my only time other like than the classic, which I take off work for that I can um, go to. So yeah, 50, definitely going to start training for 20 again next year and um, play around with some different builds for arrows. But yeah, 3D was super fun. I just, I'm not sure where to really go to start. So yeah. So ETAR. Are you going to ETAR? I'm not. Do you know what I'm that not. is? Do no, I do not. <laughs> Eastern traditional archery rendezvous. It's kind of like a camp out. Take your husband. Go go hang Ooh. out for a couple of days. Where is that it's, at? It's uh Saw 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 Hill. Okay. It's in Pennsylvania. It's, it's in right Pennsylvania. next door. Yeah. <laughs> it's right there. It's there. It's yeah. Kind of, yeah. Um it's uh yeah. Saw Mill or Saw Saw Creek or something like that. Ooh. Uh it's a ski resort uh in nice. pennsylvania but yeah that's that's a lot of fun um yeah. that's that's just a lot of us 
crazy single string guys get together. I'm actually not going this year. I was there last year, but uh, you know the push out guys will be there. Um, Alex Melanick will be there from Canada. He's coming down. I think JD's going. Um, just right. a bunch of people. Anyway, anyway, I'm just saying that not just for you. I'm saying that for everyone. Yeah. Yeah, I'm saying that kind of for everyone that's listening. It's like you know, yeah. go if you can get the E Tower. That's that's kind of where you kind of meet. You know, Calvin Smock will be there. I don't know if Dwayne doesn't usually go, um, but there's a lot of people. Anyway, anywho. Anywho, it's something right. to do, and that's other like there's so much to learn. You're you're saying I know so much. I know nothing. I'm like I'm like the most beginner that you can get. I feel so. Um, there's so much to learn and so much to do. It's it's just such an awesome sport. So I'm still gonna put you on the spot though and ask do you what, what your shot process is. Oh okay yeah, it's a work in progress. Um, I think overall though the number one thing is just whatever step of the shot process I'm in, just staying focused on that specific um, element of it. So I usually start off checking my stance, um, knock my arrow and check my crawl, check my grip, draw, check my head tilt and sight, make sure I think number one is back tension and holding and then release. Um, but through that, that whole process, I'm really just trying to stay mentally focused on what ever element I'm in. So I'll literally say to myself in my head, like I'm knocking my arrow and it sounds so silly no, and so not. stupid, great. but just that present process thinking and not, um, getting ahead of yourself or, um, you know, thinking about your last shot, just staying focused in each, you know, movement of your shot process is really helpful. So, yeah. Yeah. You, if you've ever done Joel's, uh, Joel Turner's or listened to him, he's like, Am I on? You gotta say it mentally or not. You you really say it. Am I on? Yes, I'm on. Let's go. And when you say let's go, that's when you continue pull, 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 pull. So it's it's. Am I on? Yeah, I'm on. Okay, go. Start pulling, and yeah. and and that's really that's what you're doing. You're you're doing that on your own. You're doing. Yeah. You're thinking through that. That's good. That's good stuff. Yeah. Um. Can I ask something really silly? Sure, of course, go for it. What's up with those pink cowboy boots on your? <gasps> Can you see them in the background? Wait, no, no, no. They're literally. You're, you're, what's up? Oh, there they are. <laughs> there they are. They're like I see right them. here. No, they're there. They're over this shoulder. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they uh, they are from Amazon. I think I like <laughs> as a creative person. I just like dressing up and being eccentric, and um, I think just the whole persona of like being a Barbie cowgirl boat it's all <laughs> out of irony though like it's not yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's like it's so fun so yeah there I love were, that you said that. I love that you said it's irony and and oh. but it, it is cute and it's neat it's fun and I I, I dig that and I, you're creative uh, yeah. which we expect uh, but I wanted to ask you a question about that so now that that, that you want to pair for yourself do you want me I don't know do you want to pair for yourself is that I, I already ordered them I ordered them <laughs> while we were on a break. <laughs> um, they don't have size, uh, my size though. Um, hey, listen, if you're creative, what does archery give you an opportunity to express your creative side? Because really what you just explained to me, your shot process, you added, a, it felt like you had a little creativity because you're talking to yourself a little bit through it, as opposed to a lot of us where we're just um, one, two, three, four, you know, sort of thing. Yeah. It's very rigid. That's interesting. I haven't thought of it that way. Um, I don't really see it as a creative act. I think it's more so like a, just like a mind and body act. Like it's just physical. And I never played sports growing up. Like this is so, I was like the weird art kid. I am the weird art weird. kid. So now I teach those weird art kids. I love it. Yeah. Um, but I, I, to me, it's like the opposite. So it's, it's a very different, but then it kind of balances out the creative aspect. I don't know. I, I think, um, it's more, it's just like yoga. It's like yoga, but cooler, you know, it's, it's being focused and present and aware of your body and your mindset throughout physical motions. That's, that's really what it is. So you are, you are, you are the brush. And then, you know, the paint on the canvas is the arrow flying through the air. If you think about yeah. it, you are creating something, you're creating a beautiful flight. You're creating that kinetic energy that's driving that arrow towards the target. 
and so yeah. many, and I think it was Walt Whitman that said, you know, he just the, the greatest thing on earth is watching an arrow fly. Yeah. And, and, and I feel the same way. And that's why I'm so terrible at archery. Cause I, I shoot and I go, where's my arrow? Oh, oh, oh that's I have nice. another, another book recommendation for you. It's a super short read. Um, it's called the archer. It's by Paulo Cello, who also wrote the alchemist. Um, yeah. but it kind of takes mindfulness and, um, that, you know, very Eastern mentality yeah. and applies it to it, the allegory of shooting a bow. It's like a really, really quick read. And it just talks all about, um, you know, that moment of release, you can't do anything else because you've, it's, it's a great read and you could probably read it in a day. It's super, like super short. So. I love that. I love that. Yeah. I'll, get, I'll get on that right away. Um, I need something more to read anyway. It's, it, I'm sitting in front of TV. Hey, Phoebe, where can people find you if they want to talk to you or say hi or say congratulations on such an awesome interview uh, with mm -hmm. Mick Chambers on uh, Archery Geek? Where would they find a person like you online uh, to, to, to talk to? You can find me on Instagram. My handle is Bearbow Bender, awesome. uh, which is a pun on my last name, not meaning literally bending a bow. Yeah. Um, I'm also on YouTube, but it's more art stuff. So that's Phoebe Paints. Um, so Bearbow Bender on Instagram or Phoebe Paints. So I love it. Thanks very much for being on the show. Really appreciate you. And uh, thanks for sticking around. Yeah. Hey, um, thanks for having me here. It was awesome. No problem. Hey. Um, for those people who stuck around, don't forget to uh, check out our sponsor uh, for the show, archerypass.com. Those guys are pretty awesome. They got great uh, trad gear stuff. Anything you could all, ever want, uh, archerypass.com. All right. Thanks very much, everyone. Hunt the good stuff, and we'll talk to you soon. See you later.